been over a year since I started making these Minecraft redstone builds. And so in order to celebrate, let's wiggity slack, crickety. Get right into it. In order to create the cake, I'm using resistors connected parallel to each other, reducing the total resistance depending on how many are connected. The main difference between resistors connected in series and in parallel is that when connected in parallel, instead of the resistance being added, the current is added. When connected in parallel, the resistors allow for two currents to be flowing. You can think of current as water flowing through a hose and this resistance as kinks within that hose. When connected in series, this resistance or kinks within the hose adds up. But if you had one main hose with these kinks connected in parallel, the water or current will be able to flow through these circuits, making the total resistance less than if it were connected in series. Now rearranging Ohm's law to solve for resistance, you get the equation of voltage over current. Since the current in this equation will be the net amount of current from the two circuits, the new resistance will be equal to voltage over the first current plus the second current plus any other currents denoted by I n. Again, using Ohm's law, solving for the current this time, which will equal voltage over resistance, you substitute I for V over R for each parallel circuit that's connected, resulting in resistance being equal to voltage over voltage over the first resistor plus voltage over the second resistor plus voltage over any other resistor connected in parallel. Since each of these voltage values is the voltage value here behind the resistor, you can take out that voltage, then cancel out the voltages. So then you'd be left with the total resistance being equal to one over one over the first resistor, plus one over the second resistor, plus one over any other resistor connected in parallel. By solving for common denominators, then being able to add up everything here in parentheses, then inverting the denominator to result in this final equation. I used the online voltage divider calculator in order to figure out what resistance I needed for each one of these pieces. Then I used the online parallel resistor calculator in order to figure out how to connect them in parallel to get that specific resistance value for when it's connected in the voltage divider. If I tried to use resistors connected in series, then the amount of inputs would have to increase. But since connected in parallel, I'm able to reduce the amount connected by popping these off while only having an input and an output. Here I have the resistor values I used in order to get everything. And in order to achieve those resistor values, I used resistors in series. So here it is in real time. And you can, as I hold it, the signal is pretty steady. But if I let go, then it starts to flicker just because the contacts aren't that great. If I remove one, then it removes these two, and the max signal is here. If I continue again to move another one, the max signal is now here. Moves over here. Each time being reduced by two. Right here, the max signal is right here. Here is four. And lastly, is two with just one. Also, just removing it completely will make sure that the comparator turns off since it's receiving no signal. On the inside, I'm using pins that are just melted straight on through the bodies. And unfortunately, the pins don't poke through all that much, so they don't make a good contact when connected together. In order to fix that issue, I tried to use some copper foil tape, but it still didn't make good enough contact. And so in order to make sure it has a good contact, I usually have to hold it, because if I let go, 
then it loses contact. In order to extend the pin, you can cut off the tip and using one of the resistor leads, just poke it straight through. Then you can cut off the lead and continue to pull it straight through, making sure there's enough space for the next lead to go through. You'd also need to solder this into place to make sure that when it goes into another pin that it doesn't come out. Making these pieces is pretty difficult since the pins are pretty high up. And so I won't be releasing the model until I have it a little bit easier to make. The issue with the pins being up high is that it's pretty hard to get the soldering iron in order to melt the resistors onto the pins. A lot of times I melted the sides of the plastic. Also another thing is you can see that it's bottomless and that's because when I put the bottom on it would flex out the bottom piece and make everything not want to connect as easily. I recommend having one face as in and one face as out. It'd be easier to assemble that way and also to solder. So that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, as always, please let me know. And thank you for watching.